Christ, what's going on, Beacon Hill? How y'all doing today? Awesome. Hey, look, man, um, a couple of people asked us uh, when we get the band back. Um, so I've been working very hard on my piano and guitar skills. So, uh, look, um, so thankfully, this is how God worked out. Katie is uh, recovered from COVID, which is great. Uh, amen. And her husband's recovered. And so she told me, this is just how God works. She told me uh, a couple weeks ago, she goes, look, um, why don't we let Brand do one more week, and then I'll do a solo a week, and then we'll be ready to bring the, the band back. And so doing that, we're like, okay, that, that's great. So I asked Brand to come back this week. He's doing a great job, amen. He just, I watched him, um, I watched him grow um, in the last three weeks, just God has been using him in a mighty way. And I'm just thankful that you know, God has been blessing him. And so, so Katie said, why don't we let Brand do it this week, and then I'll come back next week. And then, lo and behold, with the flooding that's been happening, Katie got called into work today uh, to man a um, evacuation shelter for those who have been displaced because of the flood. So she couldn't have been here anyways today. And so God knew that was going to happen. And so God had already preordained for Brad to be here today. And that also my God was here today. So, you know, COVID has, COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on this year. Amen. I mean, it's been kind of crazy. And I think, see, I think sometimes what we can tend to think is, I don't know about y'all, but especially looking at Facebook, we can tend to be a glass half empty type of mentality, right? We can sit there and think like, man, this has been horrific so much. So much of, of this year has been messed up and, and COVID, we can blame COVID, we can blame things coming out of the ground, whatever, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, you name it. But we literally sit there and we can be so tunnel vision that we forget that God is still on the move. See, we can tend to think that the church has been decimated uh, instead of, because you know what? Here in the American church, we tend to count um, the success of a church by the amount of people that we put in the seats when success in God's eyes are the amount of people that we send out into the streets. All right? So it's totally different, church. So the mentality that we have, we really have to change, right? I'm not discouraged that we don't have the numbers that we had. Uh, I tend to think of this as full. See, the one thing that COVID has done, it has forced the church to think outside of the church walls. Our church has always been that kind of way. But see, instead of sitting there and being depressed about what is happening, you know, because of being able to reach people online today, matter of fact, I just looked, we have like over 20 people that are watching online right now. That's not included their families that are huddled around. We have a great online presence. We have been able to reach a broader audience because of COVID. So praise God for what God is doing, right? I think, I think when you look at Habakkuk, you know, which I preach through, and if you haven't, uh, if, you, if you missed that sermon series, go to our YouTube uh, small plug to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, but Habakkuk series, Habakkuk says, look, look around and be amazed at what you wouldn't believe the work that I'm doing. See, I think sometimes we just kind of got to get out of ourselves and just look at what God is doing. And God is still doing a work here in this church, in this country, in this world for his glory. And so I'm thankful for that church. And so this morning, I want to preach that Jesus to you, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, it's preaching time. If you would, go ahead and grab your Bible. Open them up with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, where I will be studying verses 14 through 21 this morning. And if you've got a copy of today's sermon manuscript, which by the way, if you want one, all you have to do is send us a message and we will get one out to you. But I just noticed that I put Romans 11 on what y'all have. And it's Romans 10 that I am preaching from this morning. Romans 10, 14 through 21. If you don't have a copy of God's Word, the words will be coming up on the screen right here. Uh, we will also get you a copy of God's Word. If you don't have one, we used to give them out right about now, but because of COVID and just disaffecting them, we want you to get one. If you want one, please see Ryan Jenkins or Nigel. They'll get you one before you leave here today. Um, and we want to make sure that you get a copy of God's Word in your hand. We also encourage you to go to Bible Gateway or download the Version application of the Bible. We want you to follow the Word of God as it's being preached. Amen? If you are guests here today, uh, thank you for coming. I'd encourage you to go to our Facebook page and just send us a message. I'd love to get a chance to connect with you. And thank you personally for coming. If you're watching online, I don't know which camera's on me. i got a couple of them going on. Uh, please uh, send us a message. We'd love to connect with you any way we can. So if you're able, I invite you to stand now in honor of reading God's Word. Romans 10, verses 14 through 21. Romans 10, 14 through 21. 
The Word of God says this. How then can they call on Him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about Him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all obey the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the message about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Yes, they did. Their voice has gone out to the whole earth, and their words to the ends of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses said, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that lacks understanding. And Isaiah says boldly, I was found by those who were not looking for me. I revealed myself to those who were not asking for me. But to Israel, he says, all day long, I have held out my hands to a disobedient and defiant people. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I thank you for the blessing of being able to be here today to proclaim your word. Lord, I pray um, for this passage, which means so much to me. Lord, I pray that I would decrease and you would increase and you would get all the glory. I pray for the hearts of the hearers today. That the Holy Spirit would work in their hearts. And Lord, I know that your word does not return void. So Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would convict the hearts of the hearers and they would put this into practice. However you're feeling uh, that you're leading them. Lord, I pray that if someone needs the sound of my voice right now does not know you as Lord and Savior, may they come to a saving knowledge of you today. And Lord, um, we don't need a baptism pool. we got it all going on around town right now. We can baptize them anyway. So Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I have a title of today's message. I want beautiful feet. I want beautiful feet. Sermon titles have never been my forte, y'all. All right? Matter of fact, when I was back at Enon Baptist Church, I think I told y'all I did a sermon title one time that says, I'm not a Christian, I'm a Baptist. And man, that ticks some people off, all right? But it brought them in the door, so that was kind of cool. Um, so uh, when I look at the Bible, you know that nowhere in the Bible do they have sermon titles above passages. They're not there. So I feel like just preaching God's Word is good enough, amen? I mean, if you just preach God's Word, and God's Word will convict the hearts of the hearers. Yet, somehow, we have to have sermon titles. It's something, I don't know who started, I don't know how long ago it started, but you've got to come up with sermon titles. And so, the logical uh, sermon title from this week would be uh, Sent. Because, matter of fact, every Sunday when we close, we say, you are sent. This is a great passage about sending people out uh, into the streets and to the ends of the earth, uh, preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But, here's the problem with that. Um, when you say sent, and I ask you later on what, what was the message about, you might not forget, but I guarantee you, you will not forget, I want beautiful feet, all right? So that's why I came up with this today, all right? I want beautiful feet. And so this is my whole heartbeat. While the core of this message is about Israel's rejection, this is applicable to church today. This is applicable to every church today. See, the need for people to take the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share it with people who have never heard about Jesus. This is my heart. This is the core of what I believe in and who I am and where I want our church to be. See, we just don't <coughs> preach Jesus. We believe Jesus here at Beacon Hill. We put our money where our mouth is, right? In case you don't know, 10% of every dollar that comes in here. And we're not, we're not a, 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 a rich church, but we're a wealthy church. God provides every one of our needs here in this church. And yet from day one, we have put aside 10% out of every dollar that is coming here to go back out into the mission field. Every, every, we, we don't care if we have it or not. We don't care if we have money to pay rent or not. We make sure that we give God a full time. And so we send it back out to the mission field. So some of that is goes into Celebrate Recovery. Some of that goes to our humble ministry, local missions, discipleship, national missions. Uh, we have a good portion that goes right back out, and we're so thankful for that. But we also have a few other line items. We have world missions. We have a line item for world missions. And when I think about it, some of the places that we have been as a church since we started, I mean, they're in need right now. Like, we have friends in Jamaica that we were at last year, and we were supposed to go this year. And by the way, uh, if you're here today, and you're signed up for the mission trip, are you ready to go back to Jamaica next year? Are you okay? So they have, okay, like six people are excited about that. That is awesome. All right, so look, here's the thing about what's happened in Jamaica. Their mission van just uh, broke down. 
and they, they need $5,000 to fix it right now, and I think they've raised $1,500 so far. And we know from being on the ground what a blessing that van was for us to get to some places that you wouldn't believe. Like how we even got to some of those places are it's just, a, just an act of God. But they are unable to do missions work right now to get food to the needy because their van's broken down. I would love to be a part of helping that. And then we have uh, Haiti. Our friends in Haiti, who uh, Mallard Ma 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 was just here a couple of uh, years ago. And he uh, is part of a mission to work with children, and, and it's just a blessing. And so there are people that, that are near and dear to our heart that we would love to help out. But here's the deal. Our, our missions line item for World Missions has actually been kind of running in the negative. So we're reallocating some percentages to, to put more money there and uh, take some money away from places that we haven't been using as much. And so um, we also, when I think about this, um, we have 1% of every dollar that comes in to go towards starting a future church plant. Whether or not, matter of fact, you know, we have actually talked about having another church in Hopewell, just to have another church in Hopewell, because while we do very good right here in this corner, there are other parts of Hopewell where people don't have access to actually get to church. And so we want them not to have to come to the gospel. We want to take the gospel to them. So whether or not God tells us to plant another church in Hopewell, somewhere in America, or to the ends of the earth, this money has been building, and I'm thankful that we have it there to bless another church when God ordains that. We also have 1% out of every dollar that comes in that we uh, set aside for a missionary. And so I've been thankful that we've actually been able to use that uh, from one of our own. Chloe Keaton went to Costa Rica last year, and part of that missions fund went to celebrating and sending her out to Costa Rica. And so we believe in doing our part. See, we are never too small when we serve a big God church. We will continue putting our yes on the table and putting our money where our mouth is. Now, here's the pushback. The pushback that I get is why do we spend so much money over there when there are so many people that are in need right here? And so I used to be one of those people. I, I used to be one of the people who made that statement. And so I think as we listen to the Word of God this morning, we need to realize that it's not an either or, it's a both and church. We can take the gospel here and to the ends of the earth. And that is what we will do as Beacon Hill Church as long as I am the pastor of this church. Amen? Amen. So we will take the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to every corner of the well and to the ends of the earth. So listen closely to the word of God this morning. In verse 14, calling requires faith. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? See, this word call... This word call in the Old Testament metaphor means to, to worship in, in prayer. So say it like this. How can people worship Jesus if they have never believed in Jesus, church? How can people worship Jesus if they have never believed in Jesus? So here's the crux of the question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Do you believe outside of repenting of your sins and trusting in Jesus Christ of all your life that people will spend eternity in hell? Do you believe that? See, John 14, 6 says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. In the Greek, that no one means what, church people? No one. No one comes to the Father without placing their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So if you do, if you believe that, which means you believe the Word of God, if you believe the Word of God, you believe that people who never have believed in Jesus Christ will spend an eternity in hell, then the fact that there are lost people who have never heard the name of Jesus, who have never had the opportunity to place their faith in Jesus should bother you, church. Because the only way for people to worship Jesus is for people to know about Jesus. See, Stuart Briscoe gave this scathing statement. He said, the unreached population of the world are a scandal to the name of Christ and his church. See, 2,000 years ago, Christ gave a command to take the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Acts 1.8 says, and you will be my witnesses 
And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This was not a suggestion. This was a command. So the fact that there are people that are living and breathing today who will live and die without ever hearing the name of Jesus is not because of God's fault. It's because of our lack of obedience to follow God's command. So when we look around this world, and I've heard it so much, I've heard it over and over again. People tell me, man, look, do y'all see this world spiraling downward? Do you see the world just, just this year? Do you see how much depravity is? Do you see how many people are just willfully turning away from God? Do you see how messed up just America is? Do you see how messed up Richmond is? How messed up Hopewell is? It's sickening when you look at it. And yet Christians said that we need people to turn their life over Jesus. We say that people need Jesus, yet we don't tell people about Jesus. You want people to worship Jesus? They have to have an opportunity to believe in Jesus. Alright? So how does that happen? This isn't rocket scientists. So look what 14b says. Faith requires hearing. Faith requires hearing. How can they believe without hearing about him? So for, for people that come to faith in Christ, they have to hear about Christ. That's called specific revelation. We can talk about general revelation and specific revelation. But without getting too deep, God has ordained that people have to hear or read or somehow understand the content of the Word of God in order to be saved. And this is so hard for us to grasp. This is so hard for us to grasp because you know what? We have so much access to the Word of God here in America. Matter of fact, just going back to the beginning of my sermon today, I said that if you don't have a copy of God's Word, then what? The words will be coming up on the screen. We will give you a copy of God's Word. You can get a sermon manuscript of what I preach. You can download you version, or you can go to Bible Gateway. I have given you five opportunities to hear the Word of God this morning. So if you're here today, or you're listening online, and you do not know Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life, and you leave here, and you tune off without repenting of your sins and trusting in Jesus Christ, it's not because you have not had the opportunity this morning. You have had access to the Word of God. But there are people in this world that have no Bible, no internet, and no missionaries. So we believe that they have to call the name of the Lord to be saved. But it really hasn't grasped us that they have no way to call on the name of the Lord. Now, there are places today where they have no access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There, there, there are people right now that have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, this would shock you that over one billion people who have never heard the name of Jesus Christ are living and breathing right now. That is just a fact. That's just the truth. And so, even in places where we can get the gospel to people, there's not a Bible in their language. You know, there, there are places where we can get God's word in their hand, but because of so many different languages, they don't have them in there. Can you imagine? Matter of fact, why don't I do that one Sunday? Why don't I bring a copy of 100 French Bibles and tell you to follow along? It'd be very difficult, wouldn't it? It'd be almost impossible. So you imagine people looking at the Bible and they, they, they can't understand what they're reading? Man, Wycliffe, if you've never studied Wycliffe, uh, Wycliffe is literally translating as fast as they can Bibles into people's language. And they, and they only have a limited amount of time and resources, but they are getting daily as much as they can translating. It's taking years and years, and it's worth it even if one person comes to know Jesus Christ. So they're doing a great work. But if we want people to worship the Lord, we must make a way for them to hear about the Lord. So one who knows the gospel must communicate it to one who does not. So this is, brings me to my third point. Hearing requires preaching. And how can they hear without a preacher? See, in Paul's day, preaching was the primary message of getting the gospel out. They didn't have the benefit of social media or, or the other forms that we have today. People came to hear the word being preached. Why, well, I'm very thankful well, I'm very thankful for social media and the opportunities that we have in books and other mediums to get the gospel out. There is nothing like hearing the Word of God preach, church. There is nothing like hearing Jesus preach. Here in America today, there are too many churches that preach about Jesus, but they don't preach Jesus. 
here at Beacon Hill, we preach Jesus and Jesus crucified every single week. All right? So look. Now I'm going to bring my own witness today because I mean, y'all are dead this morning. Look. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ that I'm preaching this morning. Amen. People need to hear about Jesus. See, I, I, once a year I go down to Jacksonville, Florida, and it got canceled this year, but, but once a year I go down to Jacksonville, Florida, and I sit underneath some of the most awesome expository preachers that I've ever heard. And you know what happens? I literally cry because I don't get a chance to sit underneath preaching that much because I'm usually preaching. So when I sit underneath preaching and I hear the passion and how they expand on God's Word, I'm literally brought to tears because I realize how much that I love God and how much I want more of God. When I hear people that are passionate about Jesus, you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to be more passionate about Jesus. It makes me want to, to dig deeper into God's Word. I pray that I continue to get more passionate about Jesus. And I pray that you see that I care about Jesus. I hope that you can see my love of Jesus coming through me this morning. I don't say that for you to put me on a pedestal. I want you to know that because I love Jesus. He has changed my life. And I tell you, He can change your life as well. There's nothing like preaching. There's nothing like preaching. So even if you don't believe what I say, maybe you think I'm some lunatic, you might just sit there and go, this guy really believes what he's saying this morning, and I might want to check it out. So preaching requires sending. How can they preach unless they are sent? See, Paul knew his mission. His name meant sent one. He knew that he had a, a calling on his life to preach the gospel to those who had never heard, which was the Gentiles. He was going, and he needed help to make that happen. He was not only preaching this letter to the church of Rome to, to garner support financially for him to take the gospel to Spain and the place that never heard. He was preaching the gospel to take other people with him who were hearing this message. And I think that's just such a foreign concept because you know what we think today? We think that only the preacher, only the senior pastor is sent to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the fact of the matter is when I look at my Bible, if you are saved, you are sent. You are sent to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us, right? David Platt says it like this, that saved people this side of heaven owe the gospel to lost people this side of hell. So it's not a question of if you are sent. It's a question of where God is sending you. So to rephrase a quote from the late John F. Kennedy when he said, Don't ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Don't ask what God can do for you. Ask God what you can do for Him. See, excuses, church, are just disobedience in disguise. Excuses are just disobedience in disguise. See, we have technology today that has blessed us with being able to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to almost anyone, anywhere, at any time. So whether or not God is calling you physically to the end of the earth, maybe God is putting some place in you right now that, that is doing matter of fact, this is bless you. I think one of the things that I would encourage you to do is go to this thing called Operation World. Operationworld.com. Go to that website. And just peruse through that. It's a wonderful website. I've got the book. If you go to OperationWorld.com, you will see a list of countries. You will see how much access that they have to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can scroll through that. You can actually sit there and they have prayer needs of how specifically you can pray for that country. And, and what are their prayer needs? And you know what one of the most unreached countries in the world is? It's a small place called the United States of America. So you need to start praying. You need to start praying. And when God pierces your heart, you say, here I am, send me. So I want to close with three undeniable truths from this passage this morning. Three undeniable truths. And the first one is this, that God is going to do what he is going to do with or without you. God is going to do what he is going to do with or without you. See, even when his servants were unwilling to go like Jonah, God's work never stopped. If you say no, God will send somebody else. I've shared story after story of, of my time in Martinique. And, you know, the first time that I got to Martinique, we had probably 20 people there. And one of the last times that I was in Martinique preaching, do you know that people came from all over? They didn't have parking. They, they took buses. They, they walked up hills. They walked miles. No air conditioning. And over a thousand people heard the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached. 
I've been there when over a hundred people have turned their life over to Jesus. In one sermon, one worship service, a hundred people gave their life to Christ. Can you imagine that? That means like all of y'all today will be saved and then 40 more you would go find. All right? It was one of the most amazing things that I've ever experienced in my life. And i got to tell you, if I said no to going, God would have sent somebody else and I would have missed the blessing of seeing people come to Christ. And I don't want to miss that for anything. You have the blessing of being able to be a missionary for Christ. And he says, how wonderful are the what? The feet. How beautiful are the feet, who God says. Look, secondly, just because you go there doesn't mean you don't care here. See, I think the misnomer is that because we go to Jamaica, we go to Guatemala, we go to Haiti, we must not care about people here. See, Paul knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was called to preach the gospel to people who had never heard. But did Paul not care about his own fellow countrymen? Did Paul not care about his brothers and sisters right at home? No, Paul said, I wish I could be cut off from Christ just so that my brothers and sisters could know Christ. He knew that he was called to take the gospel to places, but that didn't mean that that eliminated his heart for his own country people to, to know Jesus. Here at Beacon Hill, I hope you see how much that we love each and every soul here in the well. Man, there's nothing we won't do for people here at Hopewell. We will chase you through alleys. We will go into crack houses. We will do whatever it takes so you will know Jesus Christ. So everything that we don't care about the people here in the well, but we also care about people who've never heard the name of Jesus. So look, when we spend a lot of time and resources and ministering to people in the well, does that stop us when we go to Haiti, Jamaica, or wherever else? No. It's possible to care about people in your Jerusalem and your Judea and your Samaria to the ends of the earth at the same time. One does not cancel out the other church. To the people who say, what about people here? I would say exactly. What are you doing on mission here in the well? What are you doing to reach people here? So join in mission. Do something for Jesus. Let Jesus decide where and how. And the last thing I want to share is that they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting him. So kids won't appreciate this today, but y'all... I'm an introvert. Y'all know I'm an introvert? I really am an introvert. Huge, huge introvert. I had the best day yesterday. I stayed in and watched TV and then talked to a soul yesterday. It was awesome. And, uh, but, and growing up, um, back in school, remember like third and fourth grade, um, when, when uh, if you liked somebody, what happened? You would send a note. Remember when we used to send notes when we didn't have text messages or FaceTime or whatever? Remember that stuff? And we used to send a, a note to somebody we like. And we would put yes, no, and what was the third box? Maybe. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this morning, don't you? And so I always put the maybe. And, uh, and so because I didn't like rejection. And you know what? Because I'm a nice guy, inevitably, I never got, I got one yes in my life and it's been 22 great years. All right? So, uh, but, but Girls would always put that maybe box for me because they didn't want it to hurt my feelings. They didn't want, and they would always give me this speech, you're going to make somebody very happy one day. One of y'all girls did that in here. And not to me, but you did that to some poor guy, right? All right? Uh, you're going to make somebody very happy someday. Just stop your little bit. And that's the thing that maybe really means no. And I think so many times we can get so hurt when people reject us. But here's the deal. When you preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting Christ, and that's something far worse. Yeah. So don't take it personal. You do what you need to do for Jesus Christ. And I just sit there and think this story. I sent this message out. One of the great things about sending this message out is people send me stories back or, or give me advice or tell me, you know, that was a really great sermon or that sermon sucked. Or whatever. You know, I get all that good stuff. <laughs> but this... Um, my mentor, Andy Coon, sent me a message after he read it yesterday. And he said, I heard a story about um, a missionary in Peru. He was climbing up the mountains in Peru. And as he was going up the mountains, he saw Coke bottle after Coke bottle that had been discarded going down the mountains. And he couldn't help but think, 
wow, Coca-Cola is doing a better job of getting their name out than we are getting the name of Christ out. And so I ask you this morning, where's God sending you? Where's God sending you to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is he calling you to share it with your spouse, your kids, your coworkers, someone down the street right here? Or is he calling you to the ends of the earth? Because one thing I know for sure, that God's word doesn't return void. If you are saved, you have the Holy Spirit that is convicting you right now. 